Hey guys, Jim here. Time to share with you now a new acquisition of mine and one that I am actually very, 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 very excited about. And I'm, I'm so privileged because it seems like I'm making all the right choices now. There have been a lot of sidesteps in the past year and a half or so. Buy a knife, get it. It was good, but it wasn't great, or it had this, or it had that. And they would live temporarily in my collection sometimes. And lately, I've been taking my time and figuring out what makers I want to buy from, what particular model I want, and, and what I want materials-wise built into that knife, if given the choice. And that's been making me a lot happier lately. So it's every chance I get to sit down and make a video, I get to have something that I'm really excited about because I really, really, really love the knife. This is one that... I got to tell you, I was immediately floored. I had a certain level of expectation uh, for this knife, and it exceeded all of that immediately as soon as I opened the box. What we're looking at here is a Dustin Turpin Strife. This is a brand new model from Dustin. Uh, he's only made a few, maybe, I don't know, I want to say probably 20 or so or less uh, at this point. And I could be off by a few, but uh, it's, it's certainly not a widespread model yet. Uh, he has retired some of his older models. He is still making the Insight, and the Insight has kind of a new facelift. And the Insight actually looks a lot like uh, the Strife does now. But he's doing some really cool different things. You know, it's not always going to be uh, the bolstered look with the double milled carbon fiber. He'll do stuff where he has, you know, sections going across it. So there, there are some really cool options in his knives now. For those that don't know Dustin, uh, he's a relatively young maker when you, when you get down to it. And even though he's been making knives for a really long time, he didn't hit major notoriety until, I don't know, a few years ago. And when it happened, it happened really, really, really fast. It came on strong, it came on hard, and he had a little bit of a hard time kind of dealing with all of the sudden business. And I'm sure with that business came criticisms and critiques and uh, things like that from, you know, the, uh, the peanut gallery. And he decided after a very short amount of time of that uh, to kind of back off. He kind of went into seclusion a little bit, kind of dropped off the radar, and now he's back. He's got a brand new shop. He's ready to put out some uh, really, really kick-ass designs. And I've had a chance to talk with, with Dustin quite a bit, actually. We've gotten to know each other quite a bit over the past few months, and chatting on the phone and through emails and all kinds of stuff. And what I love about him is his dedication to the craft. Sure, everybody that makes knives at some level is in it for the money, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's their business, especially if you're a full-time maker like Dustin is now. He made that transition recently. You know, he had, a, he had gainful employment, and he did the knives on the side, and then he took that huge, scary leap to being a full-time knife maker. But it's not really all about the money for him, and that's what I really love. It's about a passion. It's about a driving force that's in him, that he loves knives. He does nothing but think about knives. He says pretty much that's all that's on his mind. When he goes to sleep, he's thinking about knives. When he's dreaming, he's thinking about knives. When he wakes up, he's thinking about knives. And he's always sketching and doodling and, and uh, putting new designs together and trying to figure out, you know, not really how to reinvent the wheel, but how to do something that's unique, that isn't really out there uh, in everybody's designs. So what you've got here in the Strife is... Uh, a culmination of a lot of his design ideas uh, over the past couple of years, things that he's been wanting to do for a while. Now, this one's a little bit different. This is the first strife that he's made in the full hand rub satin blade. Uh, he has since made one more uh, about a couple of weeks ago. He did a full Timascus version, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was an auction knife, and whoever got that was very, very fortunate to have gotten that. Uh, but up until mine was made, everything's been like a dark acid stone wash. Looks great. Great user finish. And it, I think it really fits the motif of the rest of the knife very well. But when he offered to do this one and offered it to me, I said, yes, yeah, satin, absolutely. I'm a big satin fan. And he ended up putting seven hours. Well, that was where he stopped counting anyway seven hours of hand rub into this satin and you'll see that he has produced as close to a flawless satin as you could possibly ever get. I mean this is expertly done. Absolutely 
gorgeous. It's as perfect as, as, you know, anybody that charges twice what he charges, three times what he charges. And that's the other great thing. He's not out there charging a, an arm and a leg for his knives. They're, they're a premium price, don't get me wrong. You're going to be in that eight to $900 range uh, on a Strife, and I, I think about 100 or 150 less on the Insight. So it's not an inexpensive knife, but for the level of craftsmanship that goes into it, uh, I have not found a flaw. And you guys know I nitpick the shit out of everything. And it's hard for me to come out and say that a knife is perfect or near perfect. It's only happened a handful of times. I may love the knives that I get because you got to realize, you know, if, if you think, well, Jim, you love every knife. Well, yeah, you're, you're watching videos of knives that I've paid for, that I've purchased on some level. I'm going to obviously like them all. But I also call out any issues or any anything that I see that's out of place. And whether it's a knife I love or, or don't love, it, that's always the case. And I have yet to find a flaw with this knife. It is smooth. Obviously a bearing pivot, super crazy smooth, right out of the box. The firing action is incredible. You almost can't get it to uh, fail to lock up. No matter how gently, see, that's a really good detail. No matter how gently I hit that, it just wants to fly open. Now, one of the things I love is that he did a really nice checkering right there on the flipper tab. He's got it angled. And he's got very nice checkering on there. So you can uh, actually engage this flipper from anywhere and that checkering grabs your finger. So if you like to pull back, which is what I typically prefer to do, or if you want to push down, you know, if you want to kind of push button it, you're really going to get a screamer out of this thing. It's just badass. I love all the little custom touches too. You know, this was, a, I think he said it was an alpha knife supply, but it's a, it's an off-the-shelf pivot, but he went and customized it so that it doesn't look like everybody else's pivot. This is all done uh, by him on his mill. So it gives it a bit more of a unique look. The carbon fiber is amazing. He has milled and then milled inside of the millwork of the carbon fiber. So it gives you a really cool three-dimensional effect. And he's using a very high-grade carbon fiber, as you, as you can see. The weave comes through beautifully, and it almost looks like it's uh, swirling around as you move it in the light. It's almost like a waving grain, like in a field of wheat on a windy day as you're trotting through in a loincloth. I don't know. I'm just trying to paint a picture here, guys. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying. His backspacers are becoming a thing of legend at this point. Uh, I've talked to a lot of guys that would go, oh, hey, I just got a, I just got a new uh, Turpin, and they would text me a picture, and all they would send a picture of uh, was the backspacer because they were so in love with that backspacer. So what he's done here is he's taken two slabs of G10. Uh, he's obviously milled those and sandwiched a piece of uh, satin-finished titanium right in the middle of it. I don't know why my camera is having a really hard time focusing today. One of the things you guys know I will knock somebody on is a backspacer if it's not done right and on a pocket clip. And I just love the way that he's done this. Pocket clip is great. It's simple, it's utilitarian, but it is a fully sculpted contoured titanium pocket clip with fantastic retention, and I typically don't like a longer pocket clip. You know, if, if he would have actually come to me and said, hey, this is the, the length of the clip as opposed to the length of the handle, I would have actually probably had him take a third of it off. So I'm really glad he didn't tell me that, because I like this clip, the way it functions, the way it sits in the pocket, the retention that it has, and where my finger grabs onto it as I'm pulling it out of the pocket. It really is fantastic. Now, the length of the blade is a little bit tricky. If you measure from here to the tip, it's three and three quarters. If you measure from the top of the bolster to the tip, it's a four inch blade. To give you a side by side comparison, I'll bring out one of my two bodegas and doo -doo 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 -doo, put them butt to butt as we all know all things should be. And we know that a bodega is a three and three quarter inch blade. They are almost identical in their length, uh, their overall dimensions, the thickness, everything. 
So it's a really, really good comparison to have the two. The Strife is a little bit lighter weight, and I'm going to have to assume that's because of the backspacer being uh, two-thirds G10, whereas the backspacer on the Bodega obviously is a very massive chunk of titanium. You do obviously have a lot more carbon fiber on this as well, where the titanium slims down, and these are just carbon fiber inlays into very thick titanium. So overall size, very, very, very close. I love the balance of the knife. I love the feel of the knife. The detent, as I mentioned before, is great. Let's go ahead and drop it in and let you listen to it. Very, very good. I mean, just, again, it's as close to perfect as you can get. Now, let's talk about ergonomics, another thing that I, I have a, a very big issue with with a lot of knives. This just feels good. It's a nice, thick profile. And... I don't know. It, I know it looks a bit off balance. It almost looks like the blade is is too skinny for this knife. But what you're seeing is that huge relief cut. If that had not been cut out, you know, and you had that solid piece right there, you would see it's actually a very stout blade on there. Feels great in the hand. You've got wonderful jimping. He's another one of those jimping masters that creates very effective jimping. You can see it pulling uh, my skin away from the thumbnail, so it is grabbing. But it's not abrasive at all. It's not rough on your fingers at all. When you choke up on it and grab it in the choil, now you have that relief cut in the blade. So you really feel like you're holding a more precise kind of tool because your fingers are closer together. You can really choke up and get a good hold on it. The compound grind on this is fantastic. He does a nice deep hollow grind here and a full flat up at the nose. And you see that it just blends together beautifully. And there you can see that very crisp grind line right here. That's what's so difficult about doing a hand rub satin on a compound grind. If you don't do it right, you can soften the lines too much and you lose the effect. There is no effect lost here between the hollow grind, the flat grind, and the flat ground swedge up top. It, it, it just looks like this mean medieval sort of spike coming straight at you. I love this aggressive profile. He's using S35VN for the steel. There is your fuller on both sides of the blade. I love the look of it. I love the feel of it. I love the action. His finish work is fantastic. There is your blasted titanium bolster. And it is, guys, a perfectly seamless integration. There is no jump between the carbon fiber height and the height of the bolster. You'll also notice how well blended the titanium bolster is against the titanium frame. It nearly disappears. If you take it back to here, it nearly looks like a full solid bolstered knife instead of bolsters uh, over another titanium uh, stock. It looks, again, flawless. You don't feel anything. Everything has been contoured beautifully. He's done it enough where it's actually a soft edge, but it doesn't take away from the height and the size of the knife. You know, a lot of times you can go really, really heavy on the contouring and you, you're reprofiling that handle at that point and you're making it smaller. He lost nothing in doing that. The backspacer is perfectly flush. All of the components, so you're going from carbon fiber, titanium, G10, titanium, G10, titanium, carbon fiber. And everything is perfectly matched all the way around. Now, one of the fun things that Dustin does is he's been extraordinarily active lately on Instagram for about the past four months. Go follow him. His tag is at Turpin Knives, T-U-R-P-I-N, at Turpin Knives. He will damn near teach you how to build a fucking knife just by going through his posts. He does wonderfully educational posts. Not only that, but he'll make an announcement every so often. It's usually once, maybe twice a week. He'll go, hey guys, I'm going to log on to my little live feed there if you want to join me. And he uses this service called Justin.tv. I think it's uh, Justin.tv slash Turpin Knives. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I remember that correctly. 
And there'll be times he'll just have like a camera running in his shop and he'll be, you know, doing stuff and he'll be yelling at the camera and shit. I've missed those se uh, segments, but I have caught the ones where he gives you a view of his desktop on his computer. When he has his CAD program up and he's playing with new designs or altering some of his original designs. And while he's doing that, while you're watching a design get built in front of you, uh, he will actually take suggestions and criticisms from those that are uh, in the chat room that are chatting with him. He'll acknowledge everybody that's in there. Um, and he'll give tutorials. If somebody's in there going, hey, I'm, I'm a young knife maker and I'm just kind of getting into uh, designing knives and I want to start making knives. What would you do about this and how would you overcome this? And, you know, where would you put the banana slot and where would you put the detent? He's a wonderful giver of information because he's one of the guys that feels that this is truly an art and an art that should be passed down. And we all recognize that it, the, the art of handmaking knife is a dying art. And there's nothing wrong with machinists coming in and doing everything with smart technology. And, and Dustin uses a combination of smart technology and true hand building. So he kind of does everything. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that the, the art of true real hand knife making is kind of a dying art now. And to see somebody that, that fosters the interest that the younger people have in that, it's, it's a wonderful thing. I love to see people that give back to the industry and give back to their fans. And Dustin, he's a real humble cat and he loves his customers. He loves hearing from his customers. He loves seeing your pictures of using his knives and you know, beating on his knives. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I know I'm not making an inexpensive product these days. I mean, if you go back, you know, three, four years ago, you could have bought uh, what, uh, you know, a Logic or, or an Insight. You probably could have gotten for just a couple hundred bucks, three, four hundred bucks. Now, yeah, it's, it's a more premium price, but he still wants to see people using them because at the end of the day, he considers them to be a tool as they should be. He just happens to make a really refined tool. Now, the bad news is uh, he's kind of played around with opening his books a little bit. Like he would do it for a couple hours one day and he would just get slammed with two years worth of orders. And I just damn near knocked my light across the room. Um, so it's you're not going to get on his books. He's not really offering his knives through dealers right now, but... If you watch his Instagram account every now and then, he will do either a lottery knife or an auction knife. Uh, he is as active as he can be in the forums and whatnot. So keep an eye out on his Instagram. He just did one, I want to say it was yesterday, on one of his new insights. He did a lottery knife. I mean, that's awesome. Guys, you will get a chance at some point, so don't despair. But unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do a direct order. I want to talk also about the uh, relief notches that he's added in here with the liner lock. I have bitched and complained about a lot of knives, especially liner locks, where this surface here was sharp or the surfaces between the bolster or the, uh, the steel or sorry, the titanium frame and the liner end up pinching you. The great thing about this is he's notched this out to let your thumb drop in. He's notched this out so your thumb drops in further and you have a ledge to engage. So you don't pinch your finger. There is no sharp surface. There's none of that nonsense to mess with. Oh, if you want to see the lock up, there you go. And the blade centering. Now, let me also tell you why this knife was extra special. It's not only the very first satin compound grind uh, strife. It is also a prototype. Not prototype in the sense of this was the very first uh, strife that was made, but prototype in something that I'm very pleased to be able to announce to you. I've been given permission by both makers to do this. Dustin has collaborated with Jason Browse to create a more production variation of the strife and that's going to be coming very soon so Dustin made this to be the prototype uh, then he offered it to me I was very thankful for that thank you Dustin but it had to make a trip to Jason Browse out in California for a couple weeks first so I was a little bit delayed in getting it and the main the main difference is going to be you're not going to have a bolstered knife it's going to be full carbon fiber on both sides now, I don't know how many other changes there will be. They're in the, uh, the genesis right now of creating the design. And then Dustin has to approve whatever changes there are. 
Uh, but all I could say is this, if, if the flipper tab stays the same, if it has some jimping or checkering, and dimensionally it stays the same, that is going to be one of the biggest hits that Jason Browse has ever put his name on. So Jason's collaborated with some really good people lately, and I'm really glad to see two great people getting together, offering a great knife that's going to be on a much more affordable level and more readily available. So if you can't get on um, you know, a lottery or an auction for a Strife made by Dustin, Start emailing Jason and go, hey, when you open up that list, put me on it. I want to I want to get in on it as quick as I can. Um, I'm not going to promise you, but I'm going to assume, given my relationship with Jason, that I will probably be able to bring out the prototype or the first piece that he makes and let you know when the pre-order is going to open. I will certainly do my best to do that. So with that exciting news of an affordable and much more readily available Strife, I hope that you guys can get even more excited about it. And if you get a chance to get either the production collaboration or the custom, I guarantee that you are going to be absolutely madly in love with the knife. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here for right now. I got a few more videos to make. I got a few cool knives that I added to my collection this week, and I will catch you on the next one.